How do you think Mexico would change if all the farms were to adopt this practice? Oh, fíjate, hubiera un, un mundo, si hubiéramos un México, que no, ya no va a tener violencia, no va a tener enfermedades, porque te vas a alimentar solamente, no vas a tener este, problemas con los químicos, pesticidas, herbicidas y las demás. I'm Biochar Bob, and I'm in Mexico to see how regenerative agriculture and biochar are making farming a viable occupation again. Wow, this is beautiful, guys. I'm in San Miguel, Guanajuato, visiting an educational farm called Via Organica that employs local youth and teaches the community about regenerative agriculture, by example. In town, Via Organica has a restaurant and a grocery store where they connect consumers directly to the produce being grown on the farm and on the roof. We're about 20 kilometers outside of San Miguel, which is a huge cultural center for art, for visual arts. Um, and uh, they're saying that a lot of people are leaving the rural areas because um, agriculture is challenging uh, and there's all this excitement around the city. Um, so here what they're trying to do is they're saying, Land stewardship is really important and it's a viable occupation for you. There's opportunities in the city, but there's also opportunities here, and this is how it can be viable. They have a lot of the youth coming from around the area um, where they're learning these principles and they're actually getting their hands in the soil, and biochar is part of that process. Traditionally, Mexican farmers were sustainable, and we've seen a movement away from small family farms towards more industrialized farms or the use of agrochemicals or synthetic fertilizers. So one of our slogans in Via Organica is restoring the tradition, right? Mm. We're not saying that regenerative agriculture is new. This is the way that people grew food for thousands of years, and it was sustainable. That's how they maintained their communities. But currently, the lack of organic material in um, production areas and especially out in the rural areas in Mexico is a very big issue and we've seen locally levels of production drop um, you know in the past 20 years because what was once rich soil has now become depleted of its nutrients. Aquí nacieron mis papás and aquí bueno aquí cerca están mis papás entonces hemos vivido siempre aquí en el campo. Papás practicar este tipo de agricultura o no? No, es que como que es algo que se fue perdiendo con los años. Ahorita donde vivimos no hay mucho espacio para cultivar, entonces a mí me llamó la atención de ver que aquí en pocos espacios hacen muchas cosas. Igual y en mi casa antes, o sea, se perdió con el tiempo, a lo mejor mis abuelos lo hacían, pero mis papás ya como que lo perdieron por, por hacer otras actividades o por, por traer dinero a la casa, se fueron olvidando de, de cultivar de esta forma. Entonces yo ahorita de que llegué aquí como que me dio otra idea como de decir que podemos aprovechar el espacio que tenemos y que no lo estamos sabiendo hacer. ¿sí? Podemos utilizar mejor los recursos, utilizar mejor la tierra, utilizar mejor semillas que tenemos de antes. Why is regenerative agriculture important, especially in Mexico? Well, overall, regenerative agriculture is important for looking at long-term sustainability for humanity because <laughs> um, current conventional farming practices, constant tillage, the use of synthetic chemicals and fertilizers not only are polluting our environment, but they're stripping our soil. Yeah. We're losing topsoil um, annually, and it's not a sustainable way to produce food. So regenerative agriculture means that the agricultural system is able to regenerate its own needs from within the system. Biochar offers us um, soil moisture, um, it offers us greater microbial activity in the soil, it offers us greater nutrient availability over the long term. So you're building soil quality instead of um, taking away soil quality, you're building your water resources instead of extracting all of your groundwater resources. Regenerative agriculture means closing the loop, utilizing all available resources, and minimizing waste. At Via Organica, this starts with the seed. A really important thing that we do here is we promote um, seed saving. Oh, cool. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah, because I guess, I guess there's a lot of pressure from hybridization and GMO and that kind of stuff yeah. um, that people aren't even having records of. So 
keeping this, the seeds that are native here is really important. Mexico is incredibly rich with their native crops. Mm -hmm. Cucumbers, squashes, corn especially. Other crops that we um, want to market and sell here. Um, you know, we start with a seed and then we selectively save seeds from the plants that do well here. So that seed has the memory of the season before, of the soil, of the climate, and the water usage and all of that. Hmm. So we're, we're really trying to build a diversity of um, seeds that do well and thrive in this environment and encourage um, local farmers to trade those seeds and continue to save the seeds. And so the seed bank is um, a big part of our project. The seeds are germinated in a special room where they are then transferred into the field or eaten as a healthy snack. These soil blocks are made with a small hand-held um, tool that compresses the soil into these little blocks. And the main advantage of starting our seeds in these blocks inside of a protected environment is that we make sure that they germinate and we can also just kind of baby them here. We can keep them moist. So instead of going outside to water um, Mm. Like a long bed sure. that has a lot you know, This is much more efficient. It. Right, we're saving a lot of water by using the system and just watering the seeds here in a small um, amount of space. And so this is, this is very effective for a farm application or, you know, like your yes. high tunnels. And, yeah. Um, but I would imagine this would also be very effective in urban environments. Absolutely. I mean, all of the techniques that we use here at the ranch, we apply them on a larger scale for food production. But they all apply to um, container gardening, rooftop gardening. It's the same ideas that you need nutrient-dense soil um, that has rich, that's rich with compost and microbial life to grow healthy plants. We cultivate these to send to the store to put in our salads. Um, but we also sell them in our organic store for people to put them in their smoothies. Yeah, and this is, this is really ideal for the urban environment because exactly. you're getting a lot of healthy, you know, nutrient-rich food in a very small space with very small requirements. Exactly. Great. <laughs> They're delicious. <laughs> they are delicious. <laughs> Via Organica ties together their biomass and nutrient streams by composting their animal manure and applying it to the soil using biochar throughout the process. So you're inside of our turkey house. We raise um, turkeys for meat, meat production here on the farm. We currently have 35 turkeys that are growing out. And they spend their time outside in corrals eating fresh forage, but at night we bring them in here. And this is where they sleep and roost. So, um, I don't know, do you notice any smells in here? You know what, I was expecting something pretty gross, and I'm not smelling a whole lot. Right, so 30 turkeys are in here every night doing what they do and um, <laughs> we've been using biochar in this system to nice. help manage the litter on the floor and primarily to prevent a buildup of uh, manure, moisture and ammonia with um, the compacted manure. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm used to walking into pens and you, that smell is that ammonia smell. Right. Uh, so that makes sense to me why biochar is helping absorb that, keep that down in the litter. Uh, and now you're getting actually a higher nitrogen end product that you can go do whatever you want to do with it. A straw on top is our mulch and then the biochar on the bottom. Oh yeah. Like you can see, like we don't have nice. a layer, it's all soft and fluffy, we don't have a compacted layer of moist um, manure. How much biochar did you put in here? We put a layer of about two inches um, on the ground and then we've mulched it with straw on top. And what we'll do is when we have manure on top of the straw, we'll come in and we'll basically just rotate it. So the manure is falling down towards the biochar. It's getting absorbed, it's getting processed by the microorganisms that are hosted there. Um, and then eventually when it's needed, we can take all this out and, and use it like a fertilizer. Awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, I know that in other experiences I've had, you walk around and it's all slimy and, and gross and slippery, and I'm not seeing that here. Beforehand, we needed to change it every week. Wow. And so with this system, we've been going for a week. We still need to change it. Um, we're hoping to go for a month and then to have an end product instead of um, just saturated. Problems. Problems. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> turkey like that too. The manure from the turkeys, rich in biochar and nitrogen, then goes to the compost where it gets broken down to be added to the soil. So if we think of soil fertility kind of like a bank account where you have exactly. nutrients in there instead of money, uh, if you're just spending and spending and spending, you become bankrupt. Right. Right? Yeah. Uh, so when you're doing things like compost, what you're able to do is 
spend it and then reintroduce it and reinvest it back into your system and keep the bank account going. After the turkey litter is done, uh -huh. uh, it ends up over here. In correct? compost production. This pile is a, a regular compost pile with no biochar in it. We can see a difference in texture here because this doesn't have biochar. So um, it's a little bit more, you can see there's larger pieces of organic material that haven't broken down yet. Hmm. And it's also, it's a little bit more compacted. And these other piles that have biochar, you can dig in here and see, it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. It's a little bit fluffier. Um, this pile is not quite finished yet. But what we've noticed with using the biochar in the compost piles is that the compost piles are finishing faster. The biochar is helping hold moisture in the pile. So moisture also helps uh, speed up the, com the composting process. The biochar that we've used in the poultry house, it's basically already been inoculated with the manure mm. from the turkeys. And so I really feel like we're getting more bang for our buck by applying the biochar with our compost. Because the benefits that the compost offers, the biochar is just going to extend those benefits over the long term. From manure to compost to raised beds, regenerative systems enable farmers to utilize their own resources in creating long-lasting soil fertility and growing healthy plants. Rachel, this is where we, we looked at the compost pile earlier. Yes. Um, and this is where that compost and biochar ends up. Is that correct? we apply it as a top dressing to our vegetable production areas. So you can see like this soil mix um, is a mix of um, compost and biochar, mm. right? You can feel the humidity yeah, absolutely. in the soil right now. We've seen the plants grow faster and also produce more. We've been able to harvest more off of them. Awesome. My understanding that the produce that you guys are growing here ends up going into San Miguel, the local town, uh, to go into your restaurant, mm -hmm. where it's truly going from farm to table. And you're able to make that final connection of saying, look, we did the whole system. It's coming back onto the plate, and now you're getting to enjoy it. Exactly. That's so fantastic. Yeah. Learning how biochar was used in the farm's regenerative practices was great. But what I really wanted to know was how the people my age the next generation of farmers feel about sustainable agriculture. <laughs> so, mis amigos, ¿por qué es regenerative agriculture lo importante a ti? Para mí es importante porque pienso que hay muchas maneras de um, cultivar los propios alimentos. Este y para para poder ahorrar eh, económicamente podemos ahorrar nosotros y poder invertir. Eh, ese dinero o ese, en ese egreso que, que nosotros teníamos para ese alimento podemos utilizarlo en otros en otras cosas en otros artículos que, que podamos utilizar how are you going to take what you learn here to change your community to change your family to change mexico cuál otra sería pues de no, por cultivar nuestros propios alimentos de ya sabemos cómo usar cómo 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 hacerlo y cómo usar así como los fertilizantes, o sea, como en la composta, ya sabemos cómo usar, cómo aplicarla. Pues, sí, pues el, el medio ambiente pues nos da todo, nos da energía, nos da combustible, nos da alimento, nos da agua y que pues es lo más importante que, que pues, no, nosotros como seres humanos necesitamos y que pues lo tenemos todos simplemente dándole eh, que, que el, el medio ambiente nos dé y nosotros también eh, devolverle algo para que, pues para que las generaciones futuras que vienen tras de nosotros pues no se queden eh, sin eso que, que nosotros ya aprovechamos y que ellos puedan seguirlo utilizando. To the young workers of Vio Organica, regenerative agriculture is the only option for Mexico's future. To them, Agriculture is an ecologically centered activity that revolves around giving, not just taking.